Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now for today's video, we're going to be providing an update on MX Biopharma. This is one that we've covered previously on the channel. The share price has been performing very well, and we wanted to provide an operational update. Now before we get into that, please take a second, hit the like button, you guys. It's a big help to myself and the channel. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to join. And let me know in the comment section below if you're currently holding shares of Imix, what you think about the biotech or biopharma space overall, and your outlook for 2024. Now with that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay guys, so that's right. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Imix Biopharma Incorporated trades on the NASDAQ in the United States under the ticker symbol IMMX. Now this is as of Wednesday, December 6, approximately midday. You can see they're down about 26 cents on the session or just north of 5%, currently trading at $4.92. However, if we zoom out to a six month chart, you can see that Imix Biopharma has had quite a run all the way up from $1.63 in the middle of August of this year to a high back at the end of November of $5.28. So I wanted to get an update out and give you guys a little bit of a feel for what's changed over the last 12 months at Imix Biopharma. Now the reason I say 12 months is about a year ago we actually initially covered this company. As you can see on the screen, Imix Biopharma at that point in time was trading at $2.43. So essentially a double up for anyone who was able to take action and make an investment at that point in time. So congratulations to anyone who's holding this company. Personally, this is not one that I took advantage of or I'm currently invested in, but it's always nice to see stocks we cover on the channel do well, specifically in the biotech or biopharma space, as I've mentioned many times on the channel, because these companies are having a meaningful impact on the people and the patients that are using their products. Now, because it's been a while since we talked about Imix Biopharma, I wanted to jump over to the company website. I'll leave this linked in the video description below. If we go into the About Us section, you can see that the focal point of this organization is to unlock widespread adoption of what's known as CAR T cells, really targeting a variety of different conditions, including blood disorders, giving patients access to a one-time transformative treatment right at their doorstep to better address or treat their existing condition. Now this industry is really built on the back of research that was done back in 2010 and since then the United States has seen a blossoming of experts in this field specifically focused on cell therapy and the cell therapy sector. However, despite the progress that has been made, there's still major barriers or hurdles as it relates to CAR T cell therapies with 95% of US medical centers currently being unable to dose using CAR T cell therapy due to a variety of issues. So at Imix Biopharma, they aim to change that paradigm by being the first company to overcome the greatest obstacle to CAR T adoption, which is neurotoxicity. That's something we covered in our initial video on Imix Biopharma. And by overcoming this neurotoxicity, they aim to expand into new indications that weren't possible in the past. So starting with AL amyloidosis, as we saw in the intro, and eventually unlocking the potential of those 95% of US medical centers that are currently unable to dose CAR T therapies. So their strategy in order to execute here is build on the proliferation of cell therapy expertise across the US, as we just alluded to, to deliver FDA approval submission in the AL, amyloidosis, and multiple myeloma of highly differentiated cell therapy candidates, including their NXC-201 platform. In addition to that, they're going to demonstrate the power of overcoming neurotoxicity as we just identified as one of the major roadblocks, divorcing the classical relationship between toxicity and efficacy, which unfortunately has been the existing paradigm for decades in this field. Now on top of that, they're going to continue to expand into new indications and advance new cell therapies with similar transformative potential or continue to expand their pipeline of new potential candidates where this technology can be harnessed. Now, if we jump into the investor presentation under the investment highlights, you can see first and foremost is that CAR-T NXC-201 platform targeting AL amyloidosis 
which represents a huge market opportunity with very limited current or existing treatment options. Secondly, they're looking to expand into new autoimmune indications, as we just mentioned, expanding their pipeline. They've got the first single day CRS, CAR T, and multiple myeloma, which we saw in the intro. The focus on overcoming that neurotoxicity dilemma and six, or finally here, their IMX-110 platform is showing promising results in colorectal cancer with 30 patients currently dosed and 75% of patients witnessing tumor shrinkage at the two-month check-in. So again, a diversified pipeline here from IMX Biopharma, finding various ways to benefit from this CAR-T technology. Now, one thing we didn't spend a lot of time on in our prior coverage was the NGenius platform. So I wanted to talk through this because it really does enable a lot of future opportunity for Imix Biopharma. So the three key elements of this platform, it's purpose built and what's known as a cell therapy evidence capture engine plus relational database. So tying together all of Imix Bio's internal data to accelerate therapy design, manufacturing, and preclinical activity, this allows Imix to rapidly pursue additional prove it target indications or accelerate that pipeline development. They've got proprietary expand technology built within the platform, and this is actually already being used in the NXC-201 trials and platform itself. This is again in support of reducing toxicity without sacrificing efficacy as it relates to optimizing CAR-T constructs across various different CAR-T indications. And the final point here is what's known as an automized novel binding scaffold generation engine, allowing them to correctly navigate or bind to each and every molecule. And as we learned about in our last video, in relation to CAR-T candidates, it's critically important that they find the specific and accurate or correct relevant binder optimization for each CAR-T candidate to increase or decrease the binding affinity. And you can see by leveraging this NGenius platform, they're able to overcome neurotoxicity concerns, which enables them to continue to expand their indications. So this includes things like neurology, dermatology, gastroenterology, rheumatology, hematology, and nephrology, and a variety of different conditions listed here with AL amyloidosis checked off as this is the main focal point currently for Imix Biopharma. Now they then go on to give some detail about the CAR-T neurotoxicity information and the various ways this ingenious platform pairs up with various different binders. And as we continue to scroll down, we can see a list of upcoming catalysts for Imix Biopharma that I definitely think you should take note of if you're looking to make a potential investment in this organization. Now, as you can see, 2023 has been extremely busy for this company with a number of key milestones being met and checked off the list. On the left, you can see in relation to NXC-201, on the right, you've got the IMX-110 platform. And below that, a nice little summary of the IMX pipeline, including both their clinical and preclinical stages for their various different CAR-T and TSTX candidate. So I would encourage you guys to go in and take a closer look, not only at the different phases, but also the progress milestones that have been hit for both the AL amyloidosis indication and the multiple myeloma. Now, the other thing I really like here on a macro scale, you guys, is the size of the market and the timing that we have going for Imix Biopharma. So hematologic cancers represent about a $60 billion market opportunity today. That's expected to double to $120 billion by 2028. Multiple myeloma is the third most common blood cancer. It impacts over 176,000 patients annually and unfortunately has a life expectancy of only five years. So again, I always like to relate this back to the patients. AL amyloidosis impacts a smaller number of people, around 15,000 people annually, but as mentioned has no other available treatments as the standard of care or existing bone marrow transplant route is only eligible to about 20% of patients. So again, unlocks a lot of new optionality for people that are unfortunately suffering from these conditions. And it's coming at a time that CAR-T cells and CAR-T technology is receiving a ton of attention from not only the investment, but also the medical community. So for those reasons, you guys, I definitely think Imix Biopharma is worth a closer look if you're looking for exposure to the biopharmaceutical 
or biotech space. Again, this is one we've covered previously on the channel. They've performed extremely well over the last 12 months and they've got a number of key investment highlights and catalysts still on the horizon. I'd be super curious to hear your thoughts on Imix Biopharma in the comment section below, especially if you're already holding shares. If you're still watching the video at this point, make sure you hit the like button, you guys. It helps get this content to other people who may find value. And if you're not currently subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to join. We'd love to have you as part of the community. That's all for now, and we'll see you in the next video.